All right, guys, welcome to another episode of GC Talks. Today, I interview a friend of mine, a brother in Christ, a dynamic influencer on social media for Jesus. He is the founder of Think Eternity, uh, an incredible ministry that is moving across the globe. Also, he is the author of a book called Truth Plus Love. This interview will bless you. Check out Matt Brown. All right, guys, David Villa here, and I am absolutely so excited to uh, talk to my friend, uh, brother in Christ, um, somebody that I've gotten to know here in the last uh, year, um, just doing so much. You'll you'll find out when you follow him if you're not already. Um, He's just out there doing so much. You know, and I'll just say this, he, he, he seemingly never stops. He's like the Energizer Bunny, so to speak, for Jesus. <laughs> but um, Matt Brown, um, Matt, thank you so much, man, for hanging out. I know, you, I, I know you're extremely busy. You have a lot going on. Um, but I've been looking forward to this uh, interview ever since we scheduled it. And um, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you, David, so much. And uh, I know we've become great friends, man, just through meeting, I guess, online. And, uh, man, I'm such a huge fan of you and what you're doing. And yeah, I am busy. I uh, just had my fourth child, a uh, baby who's about two months old now. And uh, so I'm busy making babies, man. <laughs> well, that's fun. That's fun. Four, four little kids running around. So I'm busy. You're right. <laughs> well, awesome, man. Well, congratulations. And, and, and I know, I know uh, you've had uh, that this last month plus has been a really, really special uh, season. Um, and uh, so congratulations to you and your family. Um, I want to I want to jump into I know something that's near and dear to your heart because I see everything you post, things you say, what you talk about. And, and when I say you're busy, this is what you're busy doing. It's not like you're busy, like, you know, just doing nothing. You're or busy doing something meaningless. You're doing something that is that is so important. And the word revival, the word revival comes to my comes to mind. Um, I remember and I, I was going to look it up before this interview, but um, it's not as important exactly what it said, but I just remember one tweet from a few months ago that you said, and you said something, it was such, it convict, it, it went in my heart and got inside me. You said something along the lines of, I, like you sensed and felt that revival was getting ready to happen. You said it in such a way, and you might remember the tweet, wow. I don't know, you tweet a lot, yeah. but you, you know, you, you said something that captivated, and I felt it. I didn't feel like it was you going, hey, we're going to experience revival. Yay, yay, yay. It was like, it got me. And it felt like it was, it was almost prophetic. And um, it's in your heart. Yeah. I, I, oh, I, yeah. It's, it's in my heart. I feel it, uh, you know, probably since the beginning of 2019. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just sensed a very strong sense that revival was coming. I've been doing ministry for about 20 years with a, a nonprofit called Think Eternity mm-hmm. and a uh, team of friends preaching the gospel around the country, spreading the gospel online, anything we can do, just excited about the work of the Lord. Paul talks about, now, David, you got a lot of energy, and I think part of it comes from your faith, too, but uh, Paul talks about in the Bible, the energy of Christ, which works so powerfully in me. I feel that every day. I feel like just like, I got to do something with my life. I've got to impact people. And uh, you don't have to, I mean, I do love coffee, so I wake up with coffee, but you don't, I don't need that to feel that. It's, it's the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. Uh, Henrietta Muir is a Sunday school teacher from back in the 1930s and 40s mm-hmm. who made a massive impact. In fact, the people she mentored and the leaders she impacted are still impacting us today. Those ministries are some of the most massive, you know, million person ministries today. She said, Christianity isn't adding a burden to your life, it's adding power. Yeah. Oh, and man. there is a sense of that when God is working in your life. It's, it's obvious. So, yeah, for me, I just have felt that. Now, I've been in ministry for 20 years, but I haven't been, like, going around prophesying like revival's coming. I've always hoped and believed God would do great things right. as we share the gospel. But, no, I just, I've just felt that. And so it's been growing in me, too, a growing sense. Now, through the last few years, it's been a very sad time in the world. Yeah. And, uh, and it wasn't exactly what I expected. But uh, leading into 2020... A friend called me up, uh, Dr. Malachi O'Brien, uh, who you need to have on this, and my best friend, and he called me up in July of 2019, and he said, Matt, I feel like we're supposed to call a million young people to fast and pray as we enter into the roaring 20s. Man. And we didn't know what was coming. We didn't know what it was going to look like. We felt way too small to do a big call like that. 
but we just felt like we couldn't get away from this. And so we, we did that. And what I've been amazed by David is not only like a sense that a lot of people have some massive spiritual awakenings coming in the difficulty of our world, but how many people have been hungry? And I say this with a pun, but hungry to fast. There's Mm -hmm. been this desire for more of God, like I've never seen before this, obviously this urgency and this spiritual hunger to see God do something in our world because we we just can't fix all the problems that we see. Yeah. And so we've just got to pray. And as as a friend and mentor, uh, Dr. Ronnie Floyd says, God can do a more in a moment than we can ever do in a lifetime. And so that's why we pray because we believe we're dependent on Him. You just you just confirmed uh, something I was thinking about while you're talking, just with one word there. You said that quote and it had the word moment in it. And because um, I was thinking about, uh, I wasn't planning on saying this, but I'm preaching some more Sunday. And the Lord's kind of been dealing with me for the last couple of weeks as I'm you know, preparing about a moment. And, um, you know, I was thinking about, and there's a, several things in the Bible. I don't want to talk to you about this, maybe get you to expound upon it. But I was also thinking about the world, right? The world, the, the, you know, multiple times in the Bible, we see people that, that had a moment with Jesus. And we call them encounters, right? But there's like this, like a moment came. You know, I'm thinking about like the woman with the blood issue. You know, she had this 12-year blood issue. And then you have... Uh, Jairus or what have you that had this 12 year old daughter and these two meet in this one story in a moment you know it was like a moment that took place when Jesus was at the Jesus was at a place where they happened to bring their needs and I even just think about multiple times in the Bible where that, those moments took place and there were encounters and then I begin but I begin to think Matt about like this world's in a moment you know and that's what I kind of felt when you it's like th- th- there's a moment that I believe yeah. the world's being set up for. People need yeah, answers, I believe you know? that too. And um, that's what I kind of got. And you just went and said and said that, you know. Um, that's really what revival is, isn't it? It's that moment yeah, revi- where... Yeah, revival is a greater sense and expectation of a move of God. You know, God's always moving in our churches, you know. God's always moving in our our ministry, things that happen. And, and even online, as people share content, you can sense like God does something in your life as you read mm-hmm. a piece of content even, or you listen to uh, even this specific show. Uh, you can sense sometimes when, you know, so God is God is always doing great work. He's with us. Revival's a greater sense of that. And it's a sense that God has taken over. Mm-hmm. Man can't manufacture it. We can't uh, promise it. All we can do is pray for it. But I think what happens before revival, David, is that God puts a burden on the hearts of his people to pray. Revival always happens with prayer, but it's not prayer like, I'm going to pray for revival and it's going to happen. It's prayer that actually originated with God's spirit. Mm. So there's a sense that the Lord is giving a grace and a hunger to fast, to pray. I mean, why would we fast? Yeah. We would never fast. Who's yeah. going to fast? But, right. you know, like our human nature, we want to feast. Right, right. Uh, and that's okay, too. That's a blessing, too. But there's seasons for discipline and for fasting and saying, Lord, we really are tired of just Christianity as normal. And we, we love what you've done, mm-hmm. but we really long for a biblical move of your spirit. And we long for you to pour out your spirit. And, you know, I just think about this, David. I was recently just feeling some anxiety about some circumstances in my life. And I began to pray and I sensed the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. And, and this is available to every one of, of us. It's available to you who's listening. If you have a need, you can bring it to the Lord right now. And you can seek him. You can worship. You can pray. You can turn to him and, and be obedient to some things you know you need to do. God's presence rushes in and suddenly everything's, you know, suddenly you sense it's that, that grace that comes with God's presence. And so like, that's really all we need. Yeah. We need, we need personally and we need collectively to meet with God. We need to encounter him. We need his presence and he's happy to give it. God is more than happy to meet our needs. He's more than happy uh, not only to help you with what you're asking for, but to give you more of himself. That's good. Um, You know, I guess the last question here, and we can talk about this for a second. More of a comment, I guess. We're just talking. I think that these are the questions that have gone out the window. But looking at um, what you just said, you know, the the world, because one of the things we say about this particular interview series that I do is it's real, it's it's raw, it's relatable. And so I can't think of anything more real, you know, 
than what we're talking about. Because when it's all said and done, you know, your, your, your whole ministry obviously focuses on eternity in mind, right? At the end result. When this is all said and done, this is all it's about. I mean, no, nothing else matters. It's, it's what it's all about. So it can't get much more real than that. And it can't get much more needed than that. And, um, and, I, and I get a sense that people, that God knew what he was doing, that he created people, you know, and ultimately what they're longing for is the truth. And so are you seeing that, you know, in the world when the truth's being presented, even today more than ever, it's being embraced by people that it might surprise somebody. You know, are you, are you seeing, are you seeing situations like that? Definitely. I mean, I, lo- I love what Billy Graham said. He said, uh, everywhere I preach all over the world, no matter like what people group or nation or language I'm talking to, when I present a simple gospel message, God takes it and he drives it supernaturally into the human heart. And there's just something about sharing what Christ has done, sharing about, you know, I was chatting the other day on my podcast with Nikki Cruz. He grew up as a child of Satanists yeah. in Puerto Rico. His parents told him they hated him throughout his life. He literally wanted to die. He said when he was nine years old, his mom, you know, did something and he literally said, I died that day. Like he didn't physically die, but he just, he had nothing left in his spirit. Mm -hmm. They ship him off to New York City as he gets into his teens. He becomes a gang leader of one of the most violent gangs, the Mau Mau's in New York City. And out of a, a divine providence, a skinny country preacher from Pennsylvania comes into uh, New York City and starts preaching to the gangs at the peril of his own life. Nikki Cruz like hates this guy as he's preaching to them. And he's, he's threatening them. He's saying he's going to kill them. And at one point, David Wilkerson turns to him and says, Nikki, even if you cut me into a thousand pieces, every piece of me is going to turn and cry out. Jesus loves you, Nikki. And Nikki had never heard anyone say they loved him his whole life, but something about hearing about the message of the gospel and the love of God continues to transform the human heart. 2,000 years later, and the gospel hasn't lost an ounce of its power. It's still transforming people. It's still transforming communities. It's still transforming cities. It still transforms nations. And it's not power that a preacher has or a teacher has or even a Christian has. It's the power of God through his word and through this message. And we carry this message as believers. And you're right. It's, you know, it's great to, to be successful, man. I mean, you're, if people watch your stuff, they're going to become successful. The more they watch of you, the more successful they'll be. But hopefully it's also, you know, I think of this, this preacher, Leonard Ravenel, he used to put a, he had a card on his desk that just said eternity. That's how we ended up choosing our ministry name. And it reminded him, to, to think and live with attorney's values in view, not just human values, not just success, but how can I make a difference? How can I make an impact that lasts so far beyond this life? And it helps us keep our priorities in straight for our family, for the success we want to see, but also how can we please and honor God? Man, I, 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 uh, I'm going to leave it at that. I mean, that's awesome. I believe that this is, uh, there are people right now that are impacted by this interview and, and the message that, uh, that we didn't script, you know, this, this is, this is what the Holy Spirit does when, uh, two people get together and want him to move. So, man, Matt, I just want to thank you for, for, for coming on today and, uh, for bringing the truth and, and, um, and love and hence the book back there. But I, I just really do want to thank you, man, for that. And uh, I appreciate your friendship and thank you so much for everything you do. And if you're not following, uh, Matt Brown, um, then, you know, get out from under that rock and follow him. He's all over. Uh, he's verified on it. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. He's he's everywhere, and um, it'll be a blessing. Matt, thanks so much, man, for hanging out. Thank you. It's an honor. All right. So after this interview, you know, you heard Matt. Uh, he talked a little bit about, you know, hey, I know this is supposed to be for business people or for professionals and what have you, but I'm going to tell you, I can't think of a more on-time word for anyone. And I feel that God and the Holy Spirit knew exactly who he was bringing on, what Matt was going to say, and who it was going to impact. So I'm believing that you're watching right now and you're moved. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray for two groups. I'm going to pray, number one, for somebody that um, maybe you're going through something. You're just, you've been struggling. Maybe you're struggling in your finances. You're struggling in your health. You know, a lot of times we're just, we're just targeting by saying you're struggling mentally, emotionally, financially, spiritually, relationally, or you're struggling spiritually. And God can touch you right where you are. And, you know, um, I, I want to encourage you today. And I want to let you know that he knows exactly where you are. And so I want to just pray, Lord, that you would reach out and touch those people today. 
right where they are, that you would just bring them through whatever they're going through. Let them know you're with them. Give them peace and joy and let them know how much you love them in Jesus' name. Amen. And I also want to pray if you need Jesus, if you're watching this and you say, you know, I just really don't know this peace that Matt was talking about. You know, I, I, I felt something that was the Lord, but I don't know him. Or, you know, hey, I've gotten away from him. And I just want to encourage you that it's never too late. Today's the day. Right now's the time. And so wherever you are, wherever you are, just say this prayer that I'm going to say in your heart. And the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart that you're saved, then you will be. And so just repeat this. Say, Father, I am a sinner and I need a Savior. I lay my life down and I accept you as the Lord of my life. Forgive me for my sins. Come into my life and become my Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. You're saved. You're as saved as Billy Graham was. You're as saved as anybody else. Hey, I thank you guys for watching. Make sure you check out the next episode as we drop it in a couple of weeks of GC Talks.